It's time for our Bronson Med Chat. According to the American Heart Association, peripheral arterial disease, or you may know it as PAD, affects about 8.5 million Americans. Uh, people with this disease are at much higher risk for heart attack or stroke. We bring in our expert, Dr. Parth Amin. He is a cardiothoracic surgeon and a vascular surgeon with Bronson. Cardiothoracic, vascular, and endovascular specialist. Dr. Amin, I need to take a breath. <sighs> <laughs> That's quite the mouthful here. Uh, he joined the team in July, the heart and vascular team at Bronson of this year, and he's currently seeing patients. Uh, welcome, Dr. Amin. How are you? Good, good. Yourself? I'm okay. All right. So can you discuss your role as a, a cardiothoracic surgeon and vascular surgeon and what you do to help patients? Well, um, I basically deal with uh, uh, any blockages in the blood vessels of the heart um, arteries or the leg arteries or the neck arteries that supply the brain. Um, sort of like a plumber, uh, uh, anytime uh, the, any of the pipes in the body that deliver blood anywhere have problems um, and need fixing, then uh, I get involved. So what would happen is if, if it had to do with your, your, the, the cardiac system, basically, you, you would put on your cardiothoracic surgeon hat, and if you had to do with like PAD in the legs or, or things like that, then it would be a vascular situation. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, so I understand we're going to talk about PAD today, or peripheral arterial disease. I see it all over the television set. You know, you see PAD in advertising and whatever. So can you demystify it for us a little bit, Dr. Amin? Can you tell us a little bit about what PAD is and how it affects somebody? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, peripheral arterial disease, it's, it's essentially a fancy way of saying that the blood vessels that supply the leg or the blood vessels that even supply the brain have blockages in them. Um, you know, it's, you're right, it's all over the news, it's all over TV and stuff, and I think that uh, the main thing to know is that most of the time, the buildup that occurs in the, in the arteries that supply the legs and the arteries that supply the brain, most of the time, nothing really has to be done for it except for taking some medicines and um, some lifestyle changes like working on quitting smoking and things like this. Um, sometimes the blockages are so severe that uh, something has to be done surgically or with stents, um, but for the most part, I'd say about 85% of patients I see with PAD, um, I manage non-operatively and just follow follow up and uh, give uh, medical care. We're talking to uh, Dr. Partha Min, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon and vascular surgeon at Bronson's Cardiothoracic Vascular and Endovascular Specialist. Uh, Dr. Amin, are there are there people that are more at risk for PAD than maybe others? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the 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 main risk factors for the development of uh, peripheral arterial disease. Um, are diabetes, um, a history of smoking, even if it was 20 years ago, um, uh, high cholesterol, diet changes. Um, and so I think uh, the, the main risk factors that cause problems with heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking are the same risk factors for peripheral arterial disease. Well, I hit the trifecta. <laughs> I, have, I have type 2 diabetes and control blood pressure, and, and my cholesterol was a little bit high. Well, let me ask you a side question. If, you are, if you're dealing with your conditions well, in other words, you have your diabetes under control, your blood pressure is under control, your, uh, uh, your cholesterol you know, is under control through medication and exercise and things like that, does that reduce your risk even though you, might, you, you, you're, you have those uh, conditions? Absolutely. I think a couple things um, are, are real important to stress. One, if, if all of those risk factors are present, yet they're controlled and they're managed pretty well, the, the, the likelihood that you'll ever see a problem from the peripheral arterial disease is pretty low. The second thing is that um, just because someone has peripheral arterial disease, even if they walk and they have pain in their legs, the chance of having a major problem, meaning needing an amputation or having some sort of need for surgery to keep um, uh, the legs from having uh, any kind of tissue loss, that risk is really low. In fact, if you ha even if you have really severe peripheral arterial disease and you're not smoking and you say, one day I'm just going to stop smoking, the risk of limb loss or the risk of needing a major amputation essentially becomes zero. So there's, there's a lot of uh, 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 um, good news, and that's that most people don't need anything done, and with some simple changes, you can avoid avoid operations. We're talking with Dr. Partha Min on our Bronson Med Chat. All right, well, so that leads us to this. How does someone know they might have peripheral um, uh, arterial disease? How, is, are there symptoms to it? There are symptoms. I think that there's two main symptoms. Uh, and when we talk about peripheral arterial disease in the leg, the two main symptoms are, number one, pain in the feet, 
when you're doing nothing, so rest pain. The second sort of uh, de- phase of that is if you walk and you're walking a little bit and you start getting cramps in the leg, that's a sign you have peripheral arterial disease. It's the same sort of thing. And then the other level of, of uh, blockages can be up even higher. So if you walk and you have pain in the thigh, kind of like a cramping pain, and when you stop walking and the pain goes away, those are signs. So those are signs that you've got some blockages when your legs and the muscles in the legs need more blood flow. It's not getting it, and the body kind of cries out and says, hey, I need more oxygen. The second more concerning uh, symptom of peripheral arter- arterial disease is if, if let's say you're you're working in the garage and you drop something on your foot, or you bump into the wall in the middle of the night and you have a wound that develops on your foot, and a week has gone by, a week and a half has gone by, and the wound still hasn't healed. That's a that's a um, a sign that there may be a problem with the blood flow, and that's really a more worrisome thing. And I think for for people who have that sort of sign. I think that's a, a reason to come to the hospital pretty quickly and start getting evaluated. Yeah, that was my next question, I guess, Doctor Amin. If you don't treat this properly, what could happen? Well, if it, if particularly in the in that second group of people, the group of people that have wounds on the foot or pain in the foot at rest, um, for those patients who don't have who who don't get treated. Um, almost 100% of patients uh, will need an amputation if something isn't done um, uh, in a period of a few months. So uh, those are pretty alarming signs, uh, pain at rest in the foot and a wound in the foot that's not healing or getting bigger. Those are, I think, really uh, emergent things to come get evaluated and uh, get treated. The, uh, you know, the, the other group, the patients who have pain when they walk or cramping pain when they walk, or even the, the small degree of patients who have uh, some blockages but no symptoms at all, most of the time there's nothing to worry about, and you just have to make sure that uh, you see someone who, who knows about peripheral arterial disease, get uh, on the right medicines, and um, you know, uh, come up with an exercise regimen. That's pretty much it. And most people who have, uh, um, no, you know, who have just crampy pain, um, it gets better over time, and you never need any kind of procedure or surgery done, which is great news. Yeah, Dr. Amin, I was going to ask you, can it be prevented? And, I mean, once you have it, is it easily treated? Um, it, it can be prevented. Um, the, the, I'd say that if, if you have peripheral arter- arterial disease, you can prevent its progression. In other words, uh, if you have some blockages in your arteries, um, what you can do is you can you can see your primary care doctor regularly. Make sure you're compliant with your blood pressure medicine, your cholesterol medicine. Make sure your diabetes is under control. Continue to exercise, and if you're smoking, try as best you can to stop smoking. And I think all of these things uh, limit the progression and prevent peripheral arterial disease from being something that has any symptoms, needs any treatment, progresses to any kind of worrisome problem. Um, so it can, be, it can be controlled and kept at bay. Uh, and again, most people, uh, most people that I see in my office for certain um, are managed this way. Let me, let me ask you one more uh, quick question, uh, Dr. Amin. If, if somebody feels that they can benefit from the, the expertise that you have at Bronson, cardiothoracic, uh, vascular and endovascular specialists, what can they do? Well, they, um, if they they're seeing their primary care doctor, they can ask for uh, a referral to our office uh, for at uh, Bronson Cardiothoracic and Vascular. And I think um, if they have questions about uh, uh, basic things, they can call our office too at uh, 269-341-7333 um, and uh, uh, take it from there. Dr. Parthamin is a cardiothoracic surgeon and a vascular surgeon at Bronson Cardiothoracic Vascular an endovascular specialist in Kalamazoo. Um, Dr. Amin, we know how busy you are. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today and uh, bringing us up to date on something that I think people probably don't think about, but maybe they'll start thinking a little bit about it. (laughs) That would be good. So thank you again, and we'll hope to talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you.